All right, so in the last video, we covered 10 different design tricks that you can use to make your funnels convert better and look beautiful. And in this video, I'm gonna give you 10 more, but more advanced examples and kind of some of the things that maybe you wouldn't think of otherwise. And so this one, for example, we're just gonna start here. Again, I have a list of 10 different things. We're gonna start here because you can see what I've done here. I've just cloned this section and I have two different images. Now, none of these are limited by size. And as you know, I can go in here and make this smaller, right? But I've just uploaded both images. They're the same type of image, but one of them is bigger. Why is that? And I saw a question, someone in the Facebook group asked this, and so I wanted to mention it. But as you can tell from this image, right, there's a lot of empty space here. So ClickFunnels doesn't know that you just want to show this part of the object of the image, right? Because and, and there's no background. There's not like there's a background or, or a white background or like the office space or anything. It's just empty, transparent background, but the image in itself has those dimensions. So the reason why, and I, I did this to illustrate, I downloaded this, right? Download transparent background, but it still had all this space. So instead, what I did to make it bigger is I went resize and change these to like 550 and 670 and copy resize. And I got an image that has no empty space outside of this image. So I'm just gonna move this down here. I'm gonna drag it up all the way there. Now, also you wanna make sure that your shadows are not, if the image has a shadow, I could delete the image, the shadow first and then add it later on. But uh, now for an example, if I downloaded this with transparent background, I would get something more like this where the image, because there's no empty space, outside of the person, right, uh, is gonna look bigger. So that's the main thing and the first thing to keep in mind. If you're like, man, why isn't this bigger? Like I try I try to make it bigger, but it's not getting any bigger is because of those pixels. So I'm gonna delete this. We don't need that. I just wanted to illustrate that. Make sure that you've cropped the image so there's no empty space before you upload the image to the funnel. So. With that said, we're going to take a look at these logos right here. So this is an advanced thing that you should keep in mind as well, is if you take a look at mobile right now, you can see, okay, we have four different logos. You could keep it like this, but also I'm just gonna show you something that looks a little bit cleaner. So I'm gonna go and make this one desktop only. And then on mobile, what I'm gonna do is I am going to create a section or a row so here, for example, one column, I'm gonna move it up above so it's at the same place and I'm gonna make it mobile only. So now I'm gonna insert an image and I've already uploaded this image, but you could do the same. I'm just gonna choose you right here and you'll see what I'm doing. Okay, so now it's one image with two logos and I'm just gonna have two of those. You could also potentially, if you have like three logos or if you have three images, just eat a screenshot, but make sure that you compress the image so it's not like one megabyte. But you could basically take these images in Canva or in Sketch or Figma and group them together as one image so you get it more mobile optimized. So now it looks way cleaner instead of having four logos just like that. Now, one more thing to realize or to remember when you're building funnels in, in your mobile section. So here, for an example, Right, we have headline and image and image and headline. So in the mobile section, you'll see it just like this. So you have headline and then you have the image down here. So what you could do is make this one mobile only, move it up on top of that one. And then this one is desktop because what you want, so now these would stay the same, right? But what you want is you want congruency. You want it to look the same, just like that. So that's another thing that you can do for your mobile optimization. And one more thing, I keep saying one more thing, but it's a lot of different, it's 10 different things. So this one, for example, when you have images like this, that they look great on desktop, like this one, for example, if you make it bigger, like if, if you put it in a one column, it's going to look um, amazing and it's also big, right? So if you just put this to a mobile, it's gonna be, tiny and it's not looking that great. So I wanna show you kind of what we've done in another funnel to optimize for mobile. So 
In this one, for example, it's like, hey, turn these templates into funnels. That's what we're trying to communicate with this graphic. And this is an old offer that I had. And so what I did was I made this one desktop only. And then on mobile, I redesigned it before I uploaded it. So it was from templates to funnels, but it went downwards instead. Like, hey, take these templates. Because people on mobile, they scroll down. And on desktop, they read from left to right. So kind of same principle. But just wanted to give you that example inside of this funnel as well. Those are a couple of things when it comes to mobile optimization. And now let's go back to... All right, so now we're going to add some custom CSS to this. So because this one is pretty wide, I wanted to go a little bit outside this row right here. But I want everything else to stay the same. So I'm going to grab this CSS ID of that element, that image. Go to CSS. I'm just going to click a couple of times enter and what I'm going to do is tell ClickFunnels the editor that I want this image to be bigger than what it is right now so I am going to grab a code and I'm just going to add it in here boom and you can find the CSS codes uh, in this module just search for like how to make your images bigger same like you would in the other video with like how to get a custom gradient button and that sort of stuff. So it's like a library. You just find the one thing that you need in short videos. Not like these where, you know, these two are obviously pretty long. Okay, so now that I have the image ID, I'm also given the specific pixel amount. So like 800 for an example. Now you can see that it's going outside. And so that doesn't necessarily look that great because it's... Let me just add this. Okay, because that's, you know, it goes way outside of the other one. So maybe 700. So I'm going to go back in here. I'm going to change it to 700. Yeah, that's good. And then you can also see that we have margin left. So basically what we're doing is we're telling ClickFunnels we want it to be a little bit to the left or to the right. So here, for example, if you, have, if you don't have the minus, you can see that it goes to the right. If you have minus, it goes to the left. So this way you kind of play around with it. And you, you don't normally have to use this because we have like the left, center and right in the editor here by going to advanced you can align it to wherever but when you're using css you're already overriding that code by saying hey use this code instead and make sure the image is bigger than what clickfunnels is telling you so again here we would probably do something like minus 30 so we have it pretty close to that one but not overriding the text so i think that looks great and now we're going to move on to the next one so the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to add an animation to this so when i hover over an image is going to zoom in a little bit. So it makes the page feel more alive. I'll give you an example if we go to, for an example, uh, this right here, you can see as I'm hovering over this, it's zooming in a little bit. So if I scroll down here, same thing for, for these, right? So I'm just going to grab a code and add the same thing. I grab the ID from the image and I'm telling ClickFunnels when I hover over this one specifically, I want you to do this, right? So I'm going to grab the code and I'm going to add it into the CSS editor right there. And I'm basically saying I want you to scale it 1.03, so like 3%. Now I'm going to grab this right here. But instead of just saying this image, I want to say when I hover over this image, right? So colon, hover, and boom. So now when I go here, you can see that it's working. So I could do the same thing with this one. And every element or section or row that I want this to, uh, that I want it to apply to. So hover and boom, there you go. So I could literally do this entire section and not these individually. If I wanted them individually, I could go into columns and do it there as well. But I'm just going to do, uh, there we go, hover. And now you can see that it's... Yeah, it's working. So again, if you're feeling like this is a lot of information, if you're feeling overwhelmed, this is just to show you what's possible. And then as you go through all the other videos, we're starting with the basics of the editor. So we're going to go through every single thing with like, here's how to understand the editor and everything in the upcoming videos. But I wanted to first show you kind of like, okay, I'm, I know what I'm talking about. Like you can see what's possible. And when you're finished with this video, you've done, you, you know, 20 different uh, design tricks that you can use. And so the goal is just to blow your mind and be like, man, there's, there's so much uh, information in this. So you want to watch the other videos as well, because otherwise you might be like, okay, I don't know if I need to watch these, you know? So anyways, that is how to add animations to any part of the funnel. 
Okay, so now I want to show you how to add a FAQ section, a drop down section actually. So we're going to go to this one right here. And you can see here that we have an FAQ where this is really good for overcoming objections as you're selling your offer. Like this one, for example, it's a test, right? Like a gut health test. So the first one is like, how does the test work specifically, right? Then we put the text here. You can see that we have how old should my child be to get this test, so on and so forth. And so if people get the answers to their questions here, we have a final call to action here to sell them on this product. And so I'm just going to show you that quickly. Again, we have shorter videos for this one specifically called FAQ, but it's basically a JavaScript HTML section. So you go down or element, sorry, you go down here and you find it where it says custom uh, JavaScript slash HTML. And then there's a code as well. Obviously you, you can copy this. I haven't coded this but you can see where we put the questions. So like, here's how does the test work specifically? And that's gonna show here, right? So again, I'll go deeper into how to do that in the next couple of videos in this module, but I just wanted to share with you what's possible with FAQs and how we kind of do it. We also changed the design inside of CSS. And so you can scroll down and see like FAQ Q is questions, right? So how do we want that to look? What the, was the color? And then answers, what's the color, like font size and all of that good stuff. So like I said, I'm going to cover that here in a second as well. Now, speaking of this funnel, there's something in this funnel that I've designed, which I think that you can benefit from a lot. So let's say that you have a client or you're building a funnel for yourself and you have this process of getting a result or you sell a product and you say, this product's going to help you with this because of, you know, what we've developed. And one of the best ways to sell a product or service is to show the method, the methodology, the system, the process to getting there. So this is what I call visual communication or conversational design. Basically, when you look at this design, you should be able to understand what it's saying. Again, we have Canva, Sketch, and all of the design videos in those modules. But inside of uh, ClickFunnels, you can see that this is just an image. So I can't show you inside of ClickFunnels how to create this because you got to design it and then upload it. But we have videos showing you how we do design these. You just take a mock-up, add it to a circle, actually two circles. You have icons, a line, text element, and basically show people like start to finish. Here's how the process works. So prepare for a test, take the test stir it, shake it, store it, and send for analysis. So that's kind of how I design conversational design. We have another example is grouping images, for an example. So this is Pick Booster, which I built this funnel for them uh, years ago. And I kind of wanted to show the first impression of like, here's what we do with one image. So you can see product photos that increases click-through rates and conversion rates. Then we have like five different or four different examples immediately saying like, this is what we've shot. So now they can go down and they can read more. You can see that we continue that by showing before and after. So again, I've grouped together different images that speaks directly, even if you just looked at it and you saw before and after, okay? You know, empty images, says nothing, to beautiful images that gets more click-through rate. So that's kind of how I, I think about conversational uh, design same thing here like it's a process right first you order then you track the progress of your order and then you can launch your product with the images and then you scale so it's it's logical selling it's not this big outcome meaning emotional selling and being relatable it's more like this process this logical explanation of how you're selling something so hopefully that makes sense okay so moving on let's say that i wanted to take these three columns, right? And I wanted to make them overflow on top of another section for an example, just like I've done here. So you can see I've also added the animations here, but basically here I've added a shadow behind the columns. So not the row, not the row here, but the columns. So we have three different ones and then just made the design look a little bit more professional by basically moving them on top of the other one so that when you scroll down, you see it immediately and makes you stop scrolling because it, it's, it has like some contrast to it, which is why you can also see like why we go from a lighter background to a darker at times because of contrast. You want a lot of contrast. You can see where we have super dark background with a super light text. It's not that they look 
almost identical, a lot of contrast so that you always keep your attention on the page. And so how do you do this? Well, you just go to settings and you put a minus to the top margin. So if I change this to minus 50, you can see it goes down, but with minus 90 goes up. And so you want to have the right spacing. And then you just go in here, you just go and kind of play around to make sure that you also get some spacing right there between these two, the headline and these three sections. But they're all together. This is talking about these sections that are coming up. You could do the same thing. Let's say that you wanted to use this one instead. You could do the same thing here where you just grab this image and you put like 90. Now this one goes on top of this one and it just makes the entire design look a little bit better. So final thing for these 10 different design tricks advanced version is something that you would have to combine in Pixelmator or another software where you can design images, remove some of the backgrounds, but not entirely sort of fading into the background. And the best way to show that would probably be if I go to this one, for an example. So you can see here, Justin, we have the animation here. We have a mock-up. And we have parts of the background still there. So same thing here. It just kind of makes it more personalized when you have the environment there a little bit, but not also entirely uh, taken away from the focus of what you're trying to say. So here you can see we've added real estate coach and mentor, hundreds of clients worldwide. So we're building credibility and authority again in the image, right? So if you go up here, 29 profitable rental units and 20 years of experience. Right. So we have the all in an image saying this is who it is. Here's the results. And here's what we're all about. Right. This video right here with a play button kind of goes hand in hand with this that says free training. So when you combine these things and that's pretty much it for for this video. But when you combine these things and you always look for things to improve and you spend time mastering your craft and you spend time sort of taking it from a funnel that looks like a template to a beautifully crafted a funnel that you spent a lot of time on and making it super custom to yourself, your brand, to your offers, or to a client's brand, to a client's offer, you make them stand out or you make yourself stand out. And it's so worth it by building beautiful funnels. Maybe you don't need like a hundred different funnels in your portfolio to show that you're able to build beautiful funnels. Use these strategies, use these tactics, these tricks, to enhance your funnels that you currently have. And what's your conversion rates go up? What's your brand trust rate, if that's a word? Basically getting people to trust you more uh, go up and overall just have a more professional and beautiful branding and design to your business. So hopefully this was helpful. And now we're gonna go into the next video talking about the editor, understanding everything step by step. And you know, if you're a expert already, you can skip the next uh, couple of videos or sort of skim through them and see if they're for you. But we're gonna go from start to finish, make sure that you master the entire platform, not only click funnels, but conversion design, conversion psychology, human behavior, all of that good stuff. So. All right, I'll see you in the next video. If you have any questions, drop them in the Facebook group.